Hi, I'm Rhonda Duffy, the owner and broker of Duffy Realty, and this video is about short selling your home. It will cover the when, the where, the how, the what, everything that you need to know. And first, I want to say thank you for considering us in this process. So what we'll cover today is what is a short sell, who qualifies for a short sell, what happens in a short sell, what will you owe your lender at the end of a short sell, what happens to your credit after you successfully short sell a property, what is the one thing that you must have to short sell the property, how we come up with the price and what to look for in an agent. So what is a short sell? Well, a short sell is a transaction wherein you're asking your lender to take less than what the property's worth and wipe away your debt. Now they don't have to do this, okay? But what they do say is if you meet this criteria and if you have this and that, we would consider a short sell. Because remember, you truly owe the debt no matter what the property is worth. But the short sell system is a very effective way for you to escape that. Now, anyone who can prove a hardship qualifies for a short sell. But the key word there is proof, okay? So if you've had a divorce, a relocation, you've got medical bills, you've got a loss of job, you've got crime in the neighborhood, loss of rental income, a death in your immediate family, your adjustable rate mortgage has reset, or you simply cannot afford to live in the home, if you can prove that with documents and the checklist of docs that they ask you for, then you can qualify for a short sell. So what happens in a short sale is you continue to live in your home if you currently live there, or you continue to have renters in there if they'll allow you to sell your property while they live in there. But this process takes between, I'm gonna say, three to five months, depending on how long it takes to get the one thing that we need and for your lender to answer. So when we get a buyer, that then we take the package, a pristine, I might add, package to the lender with your circumstances. And then it takes about 30 to 45 days and then we'll hear from them. And when we hear from them, they're going to say, okay, yes, we'll accept your terms or they'll say, we'll accept your terms if you do this. So when they send the if you do this, that's when you decide if you want to close. A lot of people say, well, what will be the if, right? What will I owe the lender? Well, some lenders may ask you for a small contribution and others may ask you for nothing, okay? Um, it just depends on the lender's criteria and who the lender is and what they're doing at the moment, all right? What happens to your credit after it? Well, you will get dinged on your credit and you will not be able to buy a house I don't think they may change these. They may change the criteria soon. Who knows? But right now, you can't purchase a home with good credit terms for at least two years. But the alternative, if you're thinking about, well, I'll just walk away. Well, of course, foreclosures ding your credit for seven years, and they send you to collections and they make your life quote. This is from people who have experienced it. Living hell. So um, I think the alternative of a short sale versus a foreclosure is much better for not only your credit, your psyche, and your wallet, but also just because it's an option that you have that allows you to do the right thing. That's what most uh, sellers report when they go through the short sale process of why they wanna do a short sale. So there is something that you need to know though. We can sit around and talk about it all day long, the semantics of how you need you know, a short sell and you got this or that and you know, you're in this much debt and blah, blah, blah. But what we need is a buyer, all right? So you have to make your home a product worthy of a buyer's attention. Just because the price is low, lower than what would be a traditional fair market value, it's not that much lower and it requires some diligence on your part, okay? Nothing happens without a buyer. Because the reason that the bank would accept doing a short sell is because we've arranged it to be taken off their hands. If they foreclose, they've got it in their inventory. And if they short sell, they've got it off their hands. So you've got to remember that we've got to find someone who wants to take it off their hands. How do we come up with a price? Um, well, this shocks a lot of people, but because I think a lot of people just have the notion, well, a bank's negotiable, they want it off their hands, you know, they'll do anything. No, they won't. They have a certain lender criteria and ratio that they use, and that's based on your, your um, private mortgage insurance. 
So if VA, FHA, you know, all the independent private mortgage insurance, Fannie, Freddie, any of those places did your loan, they're the ones who are actually going to be paying the difference to the bank. All right. So the bank is not going to take a loss. They won't. They would rather foreclose and put it on their books than take a loss. So it's very precise in how we calculate this. And most of the time, once we calculate back in the commissions, the liens, you know, any tax liens that you have, HOA fees that are due, that sort of thing, second mortgage, an additional insurance provider. Once we put all of that in place, we usually end up selling it around 92% of the price of fair market value. So that's why I say that it's critical to come up with a buyer. You know, buyers in this market like to go around at the first of their transaction saying, well, I'm going to buy a house at 60 cents on the dollar. Well, that's not what this house is going to be priced at. But short sales are still a great value and a lot of buyers are attracted to them. We just have to make sure that your product looks worthy for their attention. So what do you need to look for in a short sale agent? Well, this is critical in my opinion. Most agents report that they only close 25% of their short sale listings. There's a couple reasons for that. Number one, they don't set up the price correctly. So then when the bank gets the offer, that's too low because the bank's going to order an appraisal of their own. So if it's not calculated based on fair market value, the way I just described it, and it's calculated too low, they can't sell it. The buyer's already gotten in their head for two or three months that they're buying it for, let's say, 50000 and instead the bank wants a hundred. That doesn't work, and it just puts you as the homeowner in more danger of going towards foreclosure because most likely you've stopped making your payments. Um, also, there's a lot of care and, and requirements in proving your hardship, right? That can't just be sent over to the bank just haphazardly. If you can imagine this, Banks have all of these stacks of files. Maybe they have it on their computer system, but they have all these files that they've got to get through. If your file is not pristine and perfect and looks reasonable and the buyer's in place, if your file does not look perfect, they just push it to the side to try to get to one that they can close. And they don't have time to call the agent and say, look, you're missing six documents and you don't have any documents to prove your hardship. You know, they don't have time for that. They just slough it off to the side and you never hear from them. So it does take a certain care and delicacy in making this work, all right? But you should also look for an agent who not only has a short sale designation, but also has 10 short sales that they've closed in the last 12 months because it's the experience with these lenders and being right, right with them as they make their shift that really makes it successful for you as a seller. Right now, you know, at any given time, we have between 35 and 50 short sales under contract. We have about 100 to 150 listings at any given time. But it is a delicate process. You can't just keep lowering the price to make it work, and you can't send in a messy package. All right, so it really, my short sale division has to be based on somebody who really, you know, really is a detailed, meticulous bean counter, if you will, you know, but they don't even count beans. They're just looking at documents. I do have the only designation in uh, Georgia for elite CDRS, um, and we do close a lot of short sales. I'm very proud of that. So when you need help, here's the key. Call us as soon as you get the inkling that you need to do a short sale. Time is very precious. The more time you can give us, the better we can serve you the more chance we have of getting a short sale done. If you call us because you're going into foreclosure next Tuesday, we probably won't be able to get it done. Sometimes we can get it done, but we have to act very quickly, all right? So you can view more information, testimonials, closings, listings, all on DuffyRealtyOfAtlanta.com, but please call us as soon as you think you need to do a short sale. We don't charge anything up front to you, and um, we can get the process rolling very quickly but you got to give us time. Thank you again for your consideration. Uh, I, I hope that, you know, if you're forced or, or you're thinking, well, geez, you know, should I do a short sell or a foreclosure? I hope that you'll give yourself the opportunity to do a short sell because it's a great, great way for you to alleviate debt without having the penalty and the monkey on your back for seven to 10 years. 
All right. Thank you again, and I wish you a good day, and luck with whatever you choose to do. Thanks. Bye-bye.